Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in this week's vlog you will see my interview with Mark Otte in which he tells the story behind Crossroads, a classic which he did under the project name Rio Addicts. But before we start with the interview, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and very important, also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. Alright, here it is, the story behind Rio Addicts and Crossroads, my interview with Mark Otte. Enjoy! Back in 2004, Dutch producer Mark Otte released a beautiful progressive trance track under a new project name, Rio Addicts with Crossroads. It came out via Electronic Elements, which was a sub-label from Armada Music. After my previous interview with Mark about his track Mushroom Therapy, I spoke to him as well about the story behind Crossroads and more. My first question to Mark was why he decided to release Crossroads under a new alias. So I was releasing under my own name, Mark Otto, which was tied to Armind. And then I gave the demo uh, to uh, Armada again. So you could say, okay, that's the same label, so you can use the same name. However, I felt that I was going to do like a very deep style with that uh, project. And it was under Electronic Elements, where Perry O'Neill was the, the a and at the time. And I think we all agreed that it was going to be like a little bit deeper. And uh, so it made sense to, uh, to use different aliases. Looking back, I would not do it again because um, I've noticed that a lot of people who might know my own music under Mark Alton have no clue that I'm also Rio Addict, which is a shame, of course. Yeah. Th that's why we have this interview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you could have done like Mark Alter presents Rio Addict. This is uh, what I uh, thought of later. Yeah. Too late. Yeah. Yeah, I would definitely do that yeah. uh, now if I had another chance. Yeah. So, uh, is there a story behind the project named Rio Addict? Yeah. Um, not too complicated. Um, I was invited by a friend of mine to visit her um, when she was traveling the world. At some point. Uh, she met her boyfriend, uh, I think in Canada or something, but they moved to Rio de Janeiro. And this was my first trip, uh, like, uh, like first long trip. And I just fell in love with Brazil. The language, the, the women, the music, I mean, the, the, whole, the whole country seems to live for music. I mean, when you when you uh, attend the carnival there, which is the same uh, date as in Holland, mm -hmm. as you might know, it's just uh, unbelievable to see the love that they have for samba, for the music. So I just I just got sucked into that whole atmosphere, and I decided to kind of give a homage to. Uh, to the country or to the city. Yeah, yeah. Uh, say, yeah. yeah, because I was curious if you were, if you actually ever been to, to Rio, okay. Twice actually. Yeah, okay, yeah. good. So uh, was there anything that did inspire you when you started to work on Crossroads? Anything that inspired me? Hmm. Well, you know, inspiration can come from a lot of different uh, things, of course. And uh, I tend to listen to other music and I tend to get inspired by other music like oh I want to make a, a track in that kind of style actually often when I listen back to my older tracks I could tell you okay when I was making this track I was listening to that track uh, for this one not so much uh, and this is because something else that inspires me a lot is basically just sounds when I make music nowadays, most of the time, what I do is I fire up uh, a synthesizer or I sit behind a piano or I, I take one of my guitars and I just get inspired by the sound. And then this has ap happened like a gazillion times for me. So I'm browsing through sounds, for instance, and then all of a sudden like, whoa, oh, okay, oh, I need to. And then I press record and that becomes a song really quickly. Yeah. Now, the song is called Crossroads, and maybe I'm taking away one of your questions now, but um, the sound, actually the theme, is from a Rhodes piano. And that's actually a different uh, spelling, 
but that's one of the reasons why the track is called Cop Crossroads. The other reason is because at that time in my life I felt like I was on a crossroads, which was music or career with my studies. Yeah. I think you made the right choice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so do you still remember something from the production process of the track? Absolutely. So. Um, when I started releasing music with Armada Music, I hardly had any hardware equipment, but I got signed to BMG for my publishing. It's funny, by the way, because it's not just Armada. Uh, maybe you know um, that basically, simultaneously, I got signed to Black Hole Recordings as well. Um, there's a track, one track I released there uh, called Inner Warmth, uh, with Lightscape actually yeah, as, yeah. The, as the act. Um, and via Black Hole and via the people involved in that release, I got signed to BMG, which gave me um, an advance and I could, all of a sudden, I could build like a, a proper studio. So I bought all kinds of hardware and um, one of them was uh, an Access Virus synth. And that's actually, so you have the Rhodes piano playing the chord part in, in the song but there's also this higher pitched melody and that's the virus, me finding out all the possibilities of this new synthesizer. Uh, so uh, that's part of it. Um, I ran my Rhodes sound through a special uh, channel strip with tubes in it that I bought, crazy expensive for me at the time, but it gave some kind of character to it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's part of it. Something else that's really funny to, to mention maybe is I played the bongos oh. <laughs> on the track, live bongos. Like I made a loop out of my own bongos and it's, it's in the beat. Years later, I'm listening to a sample CD and this loop is, in, uh, is included on the sample CD. No way. Yep. And they did not ask you for permission. No, that's, yeah. no, that's often how it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and what, what kind of software were you using? So, um, I was on, on PC and I was in Logic, but at some point Apple bought the company behind Logic. And back then I was still very much PC minded and stubborn like, if Apple's not going to continue making this for a PC, I'll just switch to Cubase. So actually um, Tranquility, Mark Alter Tranquility was my first production on Cubase. And this is probably one of the ones after that. Yeah, yeah. okay. How long did it take you to finish the entire track? Oh, I have no idea, sorry. Um, I do know that Sonder, the a and at the time from Armada, has more than once referred to me as the world's slowest producer. Did, did, did you get an award? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, no, I, I tended to, to, to spend a lot of time. Um, no, I, I don't know, sorry. You should make this a schedule again, like what we talked about like in the previous interview. Maybe that helps. Yeah, I, I've tried st stuff like that sometimes, but um, now I'm, I'm like I see how it works with uh, Martin, for instance, and sometimes it just takes months. And if that's what it takes, and I also teach this to my coaches. Of course, if you want to have a professional career producing music, you cannot spend months on every track. Mm -hmm. But if there is one track that is very special to you and you feel like okay i need to work more in it i would say go for it and that's kind of what i've always done this is one of the reasons why there hasn't been i i mean i'm not like mike that talented to constantly bring quality i i just need more time yeah. but then i'm happy about the production yeah it's a creative process so you cannot really force yeah you know yeah exactly um so when the track was finished who was the first person besides yourself to listen to the track uh, I'm pretty sure that must have been Perry because it was very cool. Perry O'Neill, uh, we both came up on Armada and I remember w there were these Armada nights, there were these parties that Armada was throwing and afterwards, after we became friends, he told me, yeah, I was, I was going to that party and I was really looking forward to meeting you because I always use your tracks as a reference. And I told him, yes, hey, I get goosebumps again, I told him, Perry, that's so funny because I use your tracks as a reference. <laughs> Meant to be. Yeah, so we, we, we hit it off yep. uh, right away. And we were on MSN back then. 
I mean, out. yeah, I had Marcus and I had a lot of people on MSM back then. Perry and I talked a lot and yeah, showed each other uh, each other's demos. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure that he uh, he was the first, and he also remixed it eventually. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but that, that was not that was not on the vinyl, right? True. Uh, it's on one of his uh, reworks. Yeah, reworks. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I remember Marcus Schulz playing the track in almost all the sets. Um, is there something you can tell about that? Yeah, um, so funny. Like I said, I was talking a lot to Marcus and his wife uh, back then, uh, Heather. Um, so I, I sent them all the demos as well and Marcus supported me a lot. I mean, no one supported me more than Armin. I will forever be in debt uh, uh, for all that. It's amazing what he's done for me. Um, but Marcus was a, a very nice second. Yeah. Um, but he didn't like Crossroads at first. Oh, really? Yeah, he didn't. Um, I think he said something like it's too simple or he missed some ear candy. I, I'm pretty sure I can find the MSN conversations if I have to. But um, there were uh, parties in Den Haag also, The Hague. Uh, Club Asta. Asta or O, oh, I, I can't remember. Um, I, but I do remember that Marcus was playing there and Perry was playing before him. Perry invited me into the DJ booth and then he started playing Crossroads, the original. And I saw the crowd close their eyes and go in, into the break, you know. And Marcus came, on to, uh, came up to uh, Perry and he was like, what's this song? I said, dude, <laughs> it's Crossroads. And that's how he started to get it basically and and then he yeah he supported the, the hell out of it oh wow that's cool so uh, yeah the track got released you already mentioned it via electronic elements the label of Perry O'Neill but yeah since Marcus was such a huge supporter of the track I, I wonder why he didn't sign into his label Cold Harbor recordings yeah so I'm not sure if Cold Harbor was already established uh, or at least at a, a part of Armada music I'm not completely sure and well after this little uh, story I think it kind of makes sense the first time he heard it he was like okay this is not for me yeah and yeah. He ju it just grew on him yeah yeah so uh, the b-side of the vinyl contains a remix of prop spot uh, did, did you pick him as a remixer or was it like a decision of the label well um, I tend to be very picky about my remixers actually uh, I got offered a chance to have new remixes done for some old releases and in all honesty, uh, the names that I uh, thought were appropriate, they weren't available or the label didn't want to go there and then they just didn't happen. I mean, that's how I try to keep like a little bit uh, of control over the quality. Um, I guess in this case, I, I was definitely a fan of, of Rico, of Prop Spot. Um, like TV dinner is just amazing track. Um, What's the other one? Blue, blueberry? Blueberry, yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, love it. So, I'm pretty sure that Armada came up with the name, but this was one where I was like, hell yes. Yes, go for it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, besides Marcus and Armin, which other DJs did support the track? So, um, uh, above and beyond again, uh, Paul van Dijk. I think he was kind of late uh, in, in supporting, but like Perry, um, like there was kind of this group of um, progressive trends that were all very close. We had like guys like um, let's see, uh, like Nicholas Harding, and um, so there. Yeah, those were all very supportive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cool. Um, so, what is your favorite memory when it comes to the release of Crossroads? Okay, so. Again, I'm going to talk about my dear friend Perry, still in contact, uh, just a great guy. Um, and like I said, he decided he wanted to do a remix as well. Actually, I think Crossroads is my most remixed track, actually. Maybe Tranquility, but I think Crossroads, uh, even uh, Paul uh, Octogen, he made a remix at some point. Paul Moulins. Yeah, Paul Moulins. Um, but Perry made one and it got released through his uh, reworks uh, uh, releases. Mm -hmm. um, we were already very much a fan of traveling to Ibiza then. And Perry was playing in Amnesia. And again, he invited me into the, the DJ booth. So 
when I was standing there, <laughs> he started his remix of Crossroads and that was the first time for me to be in uh, such a huge club. Like, okay. Massive sound system. Yeah, exactly. So uh, that was probably the, the greatest thing yeah. that happened. Ah, pretty cool. Yeah. And Ibiza is always nice. <laughs> Love it there. So yeah, in 2007, another Rio Addicts track came out, which was called uh, The Distance. But after that, no more Rio Addicts tracks were released. Do you think we can ever expect a new Rio Addicts track sometime in the future? Yeah, good question. Um, it is definitely something that I am considering because um, Mark Otten is closer, closer related to trends, I would say. Like I already said, Rio Addicts, uh, I kind of thought about making a bit deeper. Um, and to be honest, I have kind of lost interest quite a while ago in like the regular trance as it sounds today. Um, so in that sense, what I still listen to today has more relation to what Rio Addicts uh, was doing than Mark Otten. Um, so it could be interesting to do that. Uh, on the other end, yeah, my Mark Otten tracks are, are the, the most well known. And as I explained before, I would never do several aliases. So actually the most logical choice would probably still be Mark Otten, but yeah. I don't know. Let's, <laughs> let's see what happens. Yeah. I, I, you need to have time, of course. <laughs> yeah, that would be a first uh, requirement. Yeah. I think you already said something like this uh, before in this interview, but do you still listen to your older releases from time to time? Yes, I do. Actually, um, it, it actually sometimes, to be completely honest, um, when I'm feeling a bit down, it can help me. Uh, every creative person or almost every creative person knows um, that their level of confidence in their craft, in their ability to make cool music, just varies and it can vary quite a lot uh, as uh, at least for me um, and sometimes it helps me to listen to my old tracks and, and uh, it kind of gives me a little bit of confidence like I actually I, I can do <laughs> yeah, stuff I, I can do it yeah yeah, yeah 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 so yeah out of all your own productions and remixes do you have a favorite one and why um, well, I could, of course, tell you the standard answer, like, yeah, but all releases are like your babies and you cannot pick a favorite. I'm sure you've heard it in some interviews. And there's absolute a lot of uh, truth in that, I would say. Yeah, actually, um, I do kind of feel like that. But of, of course, even if it's just because of certain memories, you will have some favorites. And actually, Crossroads is very dear to me. Um, um, Tranquility as well. I, sorry, I cannot pick one. Yeah. That, that would be too hard. You can make a top three. I'm, I'm, I'm nice today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, um, those two would definitely be in there. I think um, both have some kind of emotion that can still touch me myself in, in, in a way. Um, so that makes it very interesting. Of course, it could also still be that uh, I am no longer happy with the mix, for instance. I mean, I've, I've learned to mix a lot better since then. Um, but yeah, I, ca I kind of like how Crossroads uh, sounds still. By the way, I didn't tell you this when you asked me about the production process, but actually I sampled the kick drum from Ferry. Oh, yeah. Wh which track? It's, it was a remix. I think it was on Purple Eye or something. Okay. I, yeah, I don't. I don't yeah, I, I don't know the artist anymore. Okay. A fairy remix. Yeah. Ah, how funny. Yeah. So, what kind of music do you listen to in your spare time? Oh, I love that question. Um, yeah, I'm such a fan of all types of music. So, actually, I just went on a holiday with Menno de Jong. I just told you. And we were in the car and my Spotify was on shuffle, my favorite. And it drove him crazy because it's so diverse. It's just like all kinds of different, uh, different kinds of music. Um, I'll tell you, uh, my favorite band of the last few years makes Thai funk and they're called Quang Bin. I've been to their concert twice. Um, I'm a guitar player 
and this guy is my new guitar hero he's he's so good he's so inspiring so thai funk i mean never expected that I'm, I'm gonna look that one up for sure oh it's it's amazing it's a, uh, a trio from uh, texas and they sound amazing yeah, yeah. so uh, but i listen to a lot of chill out I still listen to the Café de Mar uh, playlists or yeah. compilations a lot, m probably more than any other genre. But one of my other uh, heroes is uh, John Mayer. Um, so I listen to a lot of his stuff. Did you ever see him live? Yes, several yeah. times. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In, in terms of guitar, okay, I wasn't around when Jimmy was alive or when Zeppelin was playing or anything, but to me, he's probably the greatest guitar player of all yeah. time yeah. as far as i can see yeah. um so yeah singer songwriter i i absolutely love like hyper commercial overproduced pop music as well i mean so it, yeah. it, it, it it's really from the one end to the other yeah i love like the guilty pleasure stuff that's like really like the bad considered like, as bad music but it's, it's like so fun like yeah euro dance and cheesy 80s stuff yeah 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 yeah, yeah. So what do you consider to be the best part of your job? My job nowadays? Yeah. I would say the best part is that I get to do all different kinds of things. Although I have simplified uh, my jobs a lot. Um, all these different things can give me goosebumps at one point or another. When I am in the studio, of course, and something amazing happens and I just get the feel so yeah. that's amazing um, when I'm um, working with others like uh, lately I've been writing quite a lot of music also for trends by the way I, I do love love the the top line writing okay, can you give some examples of tracks that you wrote yeah uh, so uh, our sonic my good place with uh, Kathy Heath where I also by the way did my own chill out remix mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's the chill out uh, love um, recently, I've um, done a track uh, with Fena Day. Uh, Burning Game is called for, uh, with uh, Alan Morris for production. Yeah, there is, by the way, uh, some big news coming up on, on that end. Uh, cliffhanger. <laughs> um, yeah, and I'm, I'm always working on, on several projects with, uh, with different singers. Um, and now I forgot your question. Oh yeah, my question was like, what do you consider to be the best part of your job? Yeah, like I said, there is so much uh, a passion and, and, and feeling involved for me. I, I literally pick the things that I uh, do in my life on the basis of how much feeling does it give me. And to finish that little, um, little list, I told you I uh, coach producers, artists, and you wouldn't believe how often I get goosebumps doing that. Whenever I notice that someone all of a sudden gets it, like the light bulb moment, I always call it, um, or when I show them new music, and this is also, I, I, I know I'm secretly still like a DJ because whenever I put new music uh, on and, and show someone else and I see that they get inspired, that's like instantly, I, I, I just love to, to uh, be inspirational. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> well, Mark, uh, thank you very much for your time and good luck with everything. Thank you so much, Tom. All right, that was it. This week's vlog, my interview with Mark Olte and the story behind Crossroads by Rio Addicts. Mark, thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like, leave a comment in the comment section below and very important, make sure to subscribe. Also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. And in case you missed it, I did another interview with Mark and in that one he tells the story behind the Mark Alter track Mushroom Therapy. That interview is available on my channel already so make sure to check it out. Once again, thanks for watching and until next time, bye bye.